Hey, this week on the show, we've got Mr. Jim Campbell from the Professional Truck Training Association of Canada. This is a new group, and their goal is to make our roads safer. You got to take a listen. Jim is next. Welcome to the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. Jim, welcome to the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. We're discussing today Professional Truck Training Alliance of Canada. What the hell is this, and why do we need it? Jim, introduce yourself first. Good afternoon, or good morning, I guess I should say. Nice to meet you, Chris and, and John. Yep. My name is Jim Gamble. Um, the Truck Training Alliance of Canada is a group of like-minded people that, that we got together with and, and got talking about the different types of training and di different issues throughout Canada with the trucking industry. So, you know, I made some phone calls. I, I started this in 2022 is when, when I started working on it and made some phone calls. And now it, it's just kind of blooming. It, it, it's really take, taken off in the last couple of months here. Uh, more so than last month, uh, we, we did our first uh, press release. And I've uh, been, been getting all kinds of inquiries and, you know, Everybody's taking notice, which is which is a good thing. So All right. I, I did think about this about five, six years before that and, and, and gave a few phone, phone calls and then just kind of put it on limbo for a little while, did a little bit more research. And yeah, 2022, I got a little bit more serious and here we are. Okay, so you own a truck driving school, correct, in Winnipeg? I do, yes. Yeah. I, I, I own First Class Training Center in, in, in Winnipeg and we've been in operation for a little over 12 years now. Okay, and... The PTTAC, as the acronym is, or Professional Truck Training Alliance of Canada, this is a group of truck driving schools across the country, is it not? That's right. You know, we, we want to try to get all the provinces across Canada, you know, coast to coast to coast. So, yeah, we, we have the whole goal is to get at least to start with the two reputable schools in each province to represent the provinces. And it, it, it's working out very well. Yep, it's working very well. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> a, a step in the right direction. That's right, yeah. And, and I saw a recent press release. I could also be an associate member. That's right, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we have basically three levels of, of uh, membership. We have the school membership, uh, affiliate, industry associations. Yeah, because I saw PMTC and Kelly Henderson's Transatlantic human resources is, mm -hmm. did i say that right yeah yeah uh trucking and human resources sector council uh Kelly yes. Henderson and uh, pmtc uh, and they, they're very excited to be on board with us and and, and that's that's huge yeah mm -hmm. and i mean it's one it's huge to have associate members two it's huge to have quality associate mm -hmm. members mm -hmm. because that Absolutely. speaks a lot about your organization when you know other good organizations support you Absolutely. Yeah. Why do you think it is that we need a an alliance for truck driving schools across Canada? Honestly, I, I, I think it's a mess. It's a mess. Be specific about... The, the industry is becoming a big mess. Um, what, what's going out in the industry is becoming a big mess. It, 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 things need to be fixed and, and, and uh, addressed. It's uh, some, something that's needed all across Canada because I, I've talked to different provinces and um, we all have our issues and, and a lot of them are the very same issues that we're having that are not being addressed. And I think it's time that, you know, we stand together and, and start making some push for some decent changes that are going to make a, a difference in road safety. And that's what, what this is all about is road safety, right? We all have loved ones on the road. And that, that's what concerns me. It's concerned me from day one. And that's one of the main reasons why you know, I've been pushing this. You know, it's, there, there's a, no, a number of things that have to be done. You know, we all know all about the humble and, and what mm -hmm. happened. Out of that. And it's unfortunate that, that something like that had to happen to make government officials take notice. You know, I, I pushed for mandatory training many, many years, almost a decade before that even happened, and I turned to blind eyes or deaf ears. And so I came out with this milk program, and you know, because they basically had to, it was worldwide press, right? So they they figured, okay, we'll throw out a milk program, and which they did. And and I'm not knocking the officials for this. I, I mean, they something had to be done. And honestly, milk is a good program, but there's lots of room for improvement, and and they dropped. 
all in a lot of different areas. And I think that's the importance of, of forming a group like this, where we could all put our minds together and, and come up with a solution and, and hopefully fix the problem, right? Or, or right. address it. And, and uh, yeah. So. Just for our listeners and viewers, MELT is the minimum entry level truck driver training program. I didn't yes. don't think I said MELT exactly right, but that's <clears throat> what it is. Has it now been adopted in all of the provinces or is it close to being adopted in all of the provinces now? It is. It's definitely getting closer, but the problem is it, it, it's, it's not consistent. No, no, it's from different varying levels of it across Canada, isn't there? I, I, absolutely. I, I mean, Ontario, I believe is 103. Right. Um, Without air brakes, happened, but without air brakes, yeah, it's 100. Without the air brakes, that's right. And then they went to Saskatchewan, Alberta at 121 and a half hours. Mm-hmm. And then Manitoba ended up adopting Saskatchewan, Alberta at 121 and a half hours. BC is a little bit more now. And, you know, they just got got their melt system going not that long ago, which is a little bit more hours, which I understand for the mountains and stuff like that. But, you know, there's no consistency. And yeah. more importantly, there's no oversight. Mm-hmm. Well, in... I mean, honestly, being a truck driver for many years myself, just being trained 44 hours behind the wheel, it's a mm-hmm. great starting point, you know, which comes to the next part of, you know, every trucking company needs to have a quality finishing program to take mm-hmm. that truck driver with just 44 hours of experience. And now it's up to the company to finish them. But let's yeah. get back to, to your organization so you want some consistency how would this affect topics like immigration for truck drivers how do you Sorry, mean Chris? specifically i i'm i'm thinking of the red seal program for trades i i, I think the red seal program is, is i mean is, people have been pushing out for many well for decades right something that has to be done and and i think it's without it is kind of hindering our, our industry you know our I mean, let's face it, our industry is not all that attractive to the younger generation nowadays. You know, the wages aren't there. You know, the, the, I mean, it's a, it's a hard job. And, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's a very hard, stressful job. You're alone a lot of the time. And, you know, we got to make it a little bit more, throw some more incentive in there, right? And, and mm-hmm. more importantly, having a red seal is going to get them properly trained the way they should be. And we need companies to put some skin in the game on this as well. You know, the, the, to take on somebody and, and supply a mentor to these drivers and, and carry on with that mentorship program, the finishing program, and uh, make sure they're trained properly before handing over the keys and do that, doing that solo trip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And the other part I think that's important about the Red Seal, and again, for some of our listeners who may not understand what Red Seal is, if you think of it as a, an electrician or a carpenter or a mechanic or a hairdresser, or a chef, right, John? Once you've gone through your apprenticeship program and everything, and the program is, Jim, throw your two cents in here. I believe it has to be recognized right across Canada in order mm-hmm. to be considered a Red Seal program. But if the trade is, and that's an important uh, point there, it has to be a, a recognized trade. And right now, right. trucking is, or truck driver is not a recognized trade because we don't have the training, we don't have the documentation, we don't have the ongoing training, and it's not consistent right across the country. Are these yeah. some of the things that the PTTAC is trying to address? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I mean, we have a, a number of different things on, on for for a mandate, and that, that's definitely one of them, yes. You know, I, you know, John and I were talking earlier about apprenticeships and, and who has to go through what. And, and mm-hmm. I mean, hairdressers, it, it just baffles me. Uh, they do a great job and everything, and, and they go through a lot of training. You know, I, I talk mm-hmm. to my hairdresser. Not, not, we have this conversation many times. Mm-hmm. The amount of training that she has to go through and then on the job training, the amount of hours they put on is just enormous. Mm-hmm. Well, let me let me share with you some of those stats. I've got them right here because I'm I'm anal about this as we got into our conversation earlier. So Mm -hmm. in order to become a Red Seal certified hairdresser, you have to complete thirty five hundred hours. Okay, so approximately two years of that thirty five hundred hours, four hundred and eighty hours of it is 
in-school training. And then the other 3,020 is on-the-job mentoring, apprenticing, and whatnot. And all that has to be documented. 480 hours in school, in-class training to be a hairdresser is a far cry from 103 and a half hours to be a class eight or class one tractor trailer driver. <laughs> I'm, gonna say I, you know, and, and, and then there's, yeah. And then yeah. there's no formal finishing training that's documented or structured or anything like that for that driver to carry on, you know, for another 3000 hours. And it's like, uh, wow. And, I, and, like, how? and I, I feel perfectly safe in that chair getting my hair done. Not, I don't yeah, at all, you know, well, but yeah, somebody could go take a 30, 40 hour program before milk came out, even now with milk with 121 and a half hours, it, it's not a lot of training. And, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of wonder when you're meeting some of these drivers on the road, you know, you don't yep. know what kind of training they have. And so, yeah, something has to be done about that. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, you know, no matter which way I try to work it out, it's just not making any sense to, at all. To me. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 there's something upside down here that makes you scratch your head and go, how is this possible? Yeah. You know, I, we, we, we teach in Manitoba, Man, a lot of us are teaching that 244 hour program, the six week program, which is the, the largest program in Manitoba. Mm -hmm. We are certified and, and registered for milk, but I've never taught that at my school yet. Right. You Even mean, six you, weeks, a lot of time. Sorry, Jim. That, what I'm hearing is you haven't lowered your standards to meet the minimum training. Your standards are higher. They always have been. And, and, yeah. uh, and I'm going to continue to push for that. It's like I said, six weeks is not a lot of time, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so you still need that finishing program and uh, we need companies to step up and, and help out with that and, and get these training, you know, further that training as, as much as possible. You know, I would love to have a lot larger program, you know, with mentorship and everything else. But unfortunately, I mean, this is all the government's going to fund us is for what we have right now and, and no further. So, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. Well, with, with this new alliance, this is a great opportunity for the schools and the industry to work together to develop that mentoring program or the apprenticeship type program, you know, some longer time in class and then some mentoring training through a structured program that could be carried on through the transportation company, the motor carrier, who could then document that process. And then the school could probably police that process as well to make sure, you know, how are we making out with that program in order to attain a Red Seal certification? Well, absolutely. John, how about my son's a carpenter. He's a Red Seal carpenter. Every, what it was, once a year he had to return to school to learn how to swing a hammer. And, you know, there's a lot to carpentry, mm -hmm. but there's a lot to truck driving. Mm -hmm. Trucks know? are changing every day. You, you know, the, you know, the technical end of the trucks, you know, you know, the, I think it'll, we do driver evaluations as well. And it's amazing. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, the, the bad habits that form. I mean, we, we all go through that at some point, right? Yep. Uh, they, that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. you know, and and not only the the drivers or in this case the students that would come to you but i believe we don't really have a true certified instructor program as well do we we do or we're supposed to every province is, is a little bit different but there's again yep. no consistency right uh, across the board and melt is supposed to be a consistent program because when when i went through all the consultations with melt here in manitoba I, again you know I'm, I'm not bashing the government or, or, or the uh, the people that worked on on melt I, I i still think it could be a very good program if, if it was uh, done properly but they wanted the 121 and a lot of us push for 244 because i mean we've been teaching 244 six week program for decades here in manitoba and our point was, you know, why do we want to change that when it's a proven method? Mm -hmm. And they, I think their minds were made up at that point already anyway, and went with the 121. But we are still allowed to do the 244. Right. Well, let me just say that melt is a lot better than what we had, which was nothing before. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like I said, you had to do something, right? Yeah. Now, and... the, the downfall to that is that they dropped the ball in a lot of different areas. Yeah. Over I mean, melt... 
concern. Can be improved. And one of them here in Ontario, as John alluded to, there's no instructor certification, <clears throat> is, is my understanding. And Ontario yeah. probably, and I have no stats on this, but I got to imagine we turn out a lot of truck drivers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, based on population alone. Well, yeah. and the number of schools in the province. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that type of thing. So I really believe, and I know this is one of your mandates for the the association, I believe, is to get a standard for the instructor, is it not? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, again, something that has to be done. You know, there, there, it, it varies all across Canada. We need more consistency. So everybody's yeah. teaching the same thing. Well, and, and the thing is, we've got lots of instructors, and, and, and I don't want this to sound negative by any of our means, we got a lot of good instructors out there and some certification would help to recognize those guys that are helping to teach new people how to drive tractor trailers. Absolutely. That's so important. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, years it, of experience yeah. that, that, that goes a long way and, and, uh, and needs to be recognized. Absolutely. And, and again, you know, that, 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 that's part of the oversight as well. Uh, the people that are teaching these individuals and, and taking them to the test site to, to get their license and, and the ch challenge their, their test. Are, are the instructors being questioned mm -hmm. and asked for their instructor's permit? Not here. Really. You know, yeah. so it's, uh, there's a lot of things that could be fixing the problem. And, and for a while, you know, they, we have people teaching, not just here in, in my pro our province, but uh, people are teaching how to do something they don't even know how to do themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we all know how good that is for the industry, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I can tell you a true story from, now this is an older story, but a friend of mine, he was driving forklift on the, at a trucking company that I was working with. And it came out in conversation that they had their tractor trailer license. And I said, why aren't you driving tractor trailer? Well, I failed my road test here when I applied and they put me in, in a forklift. I said, oh, yeah, uh, this is a part-time job for you, right? He said, yep. I said, what do you do full-time? Oh, I work for a truck driving school down the road. I'm an instructor. I went, what? <laughs> I said, explain this to me. And he said, well, the day I passed my license and got my tractor-trailer license, the school offered me a job. That's scary, isn't it? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's what's out there. So, I mean... No, yeah, there's a lot of good drivers out there. Don't get me wrong. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, there are the odd ones that are, are, are going to cause problems and 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 happen, and 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 no fault of the student. I mean, if the student's in a in, in a crappy program, he doesn't know any difference. You know, no, he, yeah. he, no. he assumes that yeah, he's got the best training yeah. ever, but he has nothing yeah. to compare to, right? Right, right. Jim, let me give a shout out to uh, TTSAO because they are now auditing one new schools that want to get into TTSAO and they're auditing their existing schools and I can because I'm one of the auditors I think there's seven or eight of us um, I can say that no they actually have standards for the instructors and that was not a TTSAO school mm -hmm. so for any students listening listen to Jim do your research in your province and reach out Jim is there an association in Manitoba for truck driving schools no, there, I mean, I think a lot of provinces has, have, have in the past tried to form one, but didn't last very long. But the Professional Truck Training Alliance of Canada is the only association that, that is specifically for truck driver training. So this is something, as, as you know, Kim's mentioned, or uh, Kelly's mentioned this, Kelly Henderson, Mike Millions mentioned this. This is something that's been needed for a long, long time yeah, in Canada. Yeah, and, well over uh, yeah, and it's, so it, 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 it's going to, it's taken off very well right now, and it's going to continue to do so. Hey, Jim, let me tell you, as soon as I saw the press release that this had officially been formed, that's, as you know, that's when I sent the first email out to Mr. Richardson to say, yeah. introduce me to my new friend, Jim, because <laughs> I do believe in all of my heart We've mm -hmm. got to improve how yeah. we bring people into our industry. I love trucking, and the way we used to do it just isn't good enough, and we've really got to make it more attractive, and making it a trade is one way to make it more attractive, and we've got to make it safer. 
for the yeah. employees, for the motoring public. And it's, you know, I, I read a lot of stats and trucking, trucking fatalities in Canada are still going down when you compare it to the number of miles and the number of vehicles on the road. But as long as there is one fatality, that's still too many. So well, absolutely. I mean, and, and there's nothing more important to the trucking industry than road safety. And and yeah. road safety is gonna start with the training, period. You know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you know, I, I I I see the same stats as you do, uh, Chris. But you know, the the humble took notice. Everybody took notice of humble and and because it was a big accident. But if you add up all the deaths across Canada, you know, two here, one there, three over here, it's going to add up a lot more than than humbled actually, and and mm-hmm. no, no paying attention to that, you know, yeah. and you know, my my biggest goal always has been is you know you save one life, I mean, you know, you've done something, right? Yeah, like mm-hmm. the last stat I saw, by the way, for trucking was 26 deaths per 100,000 truck drivers. Now, that's an American stat. I have not seen a Canadian stat, but I got to believe that's pretty accurate here in Canada as well. Mm-hmm. Got to be close. 26 yeah. truck drivers dying per 100,000 truck drivers is just too many. And we can improve it by having good schools and good instructors out there. Absolutely, and and uh, good mentorship. Yep. Mentorship is everything. You know, it's yep. uh, like I said before, it's a six week program. It, it, it's a big program here, but it's still not long enough. It, it, you, you could have a, a 12, 15 week program. It still needs mentorship. Yeah. Well, I I really hope that as we develop and move towards getting it to be a trade, that some ongoing education would be required as a trade, and especially before you become a journeyman. You would have to go back, as I said, my son's in carpentry. And he said, Dad, you can't believe some of the bad habits these people get into early in their profession. And by going back to school, it really helps get rid of some of those bad habits. And it's just, it's professional. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You know, a lot of people don't realize they have the bad habits until it's pointed out, right? Right. Yep, yep. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I, I, I want to go back and touch on something you had mentioned there with young drivers and whatnot. And, and unfortunately, Chris and I see this all too often in, in transportation customers. Um, you'll get a new driver. He's with the company maybe six months. And now all of a sudden he becomes the mentor to the next new driver that just came out of school. And it's like, I, I use the phrase babies teaching babies. And it's like, Holy crap, you know, and, and then on top of that, you don't even have a structured program. You're just putting the two of them in the truck, sending them on their way, and disaster's going to happen, and, and, and it does, and it's unfortunate. And so part of that problem stems with the motor carrier. They have to realize what's going on, and they need to be part of this association as well to work with the schools to say, not only do the schools across Canada can we raise the bar, but as a motor carrier that's doing a mentoring program, we need to raise the bar as well. We need we need to have mentors within our organization, uh, a structured program to be able to help these young people become better drivers. Absolutely, and, and and that's what I was saying earlier. I mean, the companies that you know they need to step up and put some skin in the game. You know, mm-hmm. and, and it would be nice if if, if there's some sort of compensation for that through the government, you know, because, because it does cost a lot of money. I mean, if you look at good, a good finishing program for a company to do it properly, you're looking at ten to $15,000 to finish that one individual off, you know, so it does cost a lot of money on their end. So, yep. Yep. so uh, you know, they are stepping up. A lot of the companies are stepping up and doing yep. that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Many of the quality companies, and I'll jump over to Winnipeg there and say a Bison, for example, they absolutely. do it. They have a great finishing program. And if you're a young driver looking for a job, search out companies that do have finishing programs because that's what you deserve as a new driver. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 uh, you know, Bison's finishing program is second to none. You know, they really pay a lot of attention to what they're doing and their safety record shows that. Yeah. Yeah. Year after year, what it was, it's seven out of 10. Years and years, Bison was rated the safest 
trucking company in North America. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah, yeah. Because they're doing so, things right. They're, they're doing it properly, right? They're, they're yep. taking the time and the investment to put into that new driver. Yeah, it costs money and Bison Absolutely. spends it. Yep. Absolutely. And Bison's not the only one. It just because no. you're in Winnipeg and, yeah. you know, <laughs> Rob Penner and I know each other. Uh, I'm sure you know Rob as well. And it's easy to sing the praises of a Bison, but there's many other trucking companies as well. Absolutely. But, Jim, we're wrapping it up. What else do we need to know about the Professional Truck Training Alliance of Canada? Well, we did. We do have our board of directors and, and, and executive directors. I, I, I think we could run down the list. There, uh, I believe there's nine people on there. You know, Don McDonald, he, he's from Calgary. Carmilla Gennaro from Edmonton. Earl from Matsum. Training is uh, Saskatoon. Chris Schroeder, he, he's from Yukon, Northwest Territories, Nunavut, Jeremy, Turo, uh, Nova Scotia, Matt, you probably know Matt Richardson, South yeah. Caledonia, Brian, Lively, I think it is, Ontario, Tony Falk from Blumen North. You know, these are all the like minded people that we originally sat down and talked to. You know, going going back when we first started this, right? And so, so we got a lot of the provinces covered. Uh, a lot of these are, are you know, they, they've been in, involved right from day one, and uh, we're all pushing for the same thing. So, instructor certification uh, oversight is, is we talked a little bit about the oversight. No oversight. Yeah, uh, I think that there, there there's nine people. I don't know how many schools in Ontario, but there's quite a few in Ontario in Mississauga alone, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, nine people doing oversight well, um, and, well, and, and those is, nine people aren't just doing oversight on truck driving no, schools no, they're right. doing the hairdressing schools and all the other schools yep. that are involved as well yep. yes yeah we have two people inadequate sorry we have two people doing 500 schools here yeah you know it's all yeah I don't think anybody's going to get nodded anytime soon, really, but uh, unless something goes wrong, right? And, and uh, that's where they, I think that's the major ball that they dropped it, is oversight. And, you know, yeah. you can't just well, put a program on and, and just do your own thing. And it, yeah. It, it doesn't work. Well, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, those, these folks that are doing, you know, the oversight reviews or audits or whatever it be, they're not specialists in in your school realm they're generalists they're they're just looking to see do you have some documentation in place do you follow the rules that you're supposed to but they're not like people that have driven tractor trailers so they have a more insight as to what they're looking for when they go into that school actually these two actually have a license but i think between the comp uh, you know between the two of them it's not a whole lot of experience i they definitely don't have, and, and not just this province, you know, I mean, to, yeah. to, to do the oversight, you got to have the experience on, on not just the trucking industry, but how to teach properly and, and, and what are you teaching? And so and there's so much more involved in, in truck driver training than people yeah. realize, you know, and, yeah. and I, I gained six weeks for me is just never long enough. It, it just goes so fast and you try to get as much information as you can and, you know, thrown at these students in, in six weeks. And then hopefully they go with a company that's going to carry on the mentorship. So yeah. those are some of the things that we're really pushing for. Um, but we want to harmonize regulation and compliance through all the schools and, and across Canada. So we're all dealing on the same level, right? And, and pushing out the same quality of drivers. We're, we're just tired of seeing less than qualified drivers out there causing havoc, right? And they need, you know, we, we just, it's time for change. It is. And a great organization has been started now and it's getting industry support. It's getting industry support from other like-minded owners of truck driving schools like yourself. And it's getting industry support from people like, you know, Kelly Henderson's group, Mac, or sorry, Matt, Mike Millions, PMTC. I mean, this is industry support. So it's great. And congratulations, Jim. For being involved, I know you're not the only one, but for being involved and in getting this thing off the ground, I agree 100% with you that we need better oversight, we probably need better standards as well, and we need consistency right across the country. 
Uh, absolutely. And and that's where, you know, you mentioned Kim Richardson earlier. I, I, I do have to let you know that Kim was my co-chair at first, and he was my first phone call, you know, because I, I did some research on TPSAO, and, and, and I got talking with him, and the guy's amazing. <laughs> you know, he, he really is. And, and so he helped me launch this thing. And, yeah. and we, he also owns uh, TransRep as well. So we hired TransRep to kick off the association, build it strong and, and move forward. So Kim, as uh, we hired him as our senior advisor. And so, yeah. so, you know, a, a big shout out to Kim. He, I mean, with, we've come so far, he's done so much work with, with me and uh, with the rest of the group that this, this is not all about Jim. I mean, I, I put the idea out there and Kim and I started making phone calls and, and uh, we, we got connected with the right people and uh, it's the right people that are, are pushing this forward. You know, without, without what we have right now for involvement, we, we wouldn't be this far. Cool. Yeah, no, cool. You need support and it's a, it's always a team. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. There's no way I'd be able to pull this off. I mean, it's off me. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and not, yeah. you're running I'm a not success- gonna lie, right? Uh, yeah, but you're also running a successful school. Mm-hmm. You know, so an yeah. endeavor like this is a huge undertaking. And mm-hmm. I, I, for one, congratulate you for doing it because it yes. a, it's going to be a lot of heavy lifting, but <laughs> it needs I'm, I'm to be done. It. I really enjoy it. Good. Good. Thanks, Jim, well, for coming on the show. Old truck. Training Alliance of Canada. All right, Jim, thanks. Keep up the great work. That's it for this week on the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. Please leave a comment in the notes down below. Uh, Did you enjoy the episode? Give it a like if you did. Appreciate you all so much. That's it for this week on the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. (music) 